these folks feel like they're being targeted because of the political wrangling that's going on in Washington. I appreciate, and, I, and I, I appreciate that. It's just like people thinking that you got to so, be born in the United States to yeah. be president. You don't have to be. That's a legend. We got to clarify uh, that. You saw McCain right, could be run. president. Thank Congressman, you. good to have you with us. Now, as Molly Safer reports, the Austrian-born Schwarzenegger has an even bigger role in his sights to one day be the president of the United States. Just like people thinking that you got to so, be born in the United States to yeah. be president, you don't have to be. That's a legend. We got to clarify. Normally, that. even a first-term California governor with Schwarzenegger's star power would be talked about as a potential future presidential candidate. But being foreign-born, he can't run. There are attempts to change that. You are ineligible, obviously, to run for president. Would you like to be able to? Would you like to see an amendment to the Constitution? Yes, absolutely. I think, you know, because why not? Just like people thinking that you got to so, be born in the United States yeah. to be president. You don't have to be. That's a legend. we got to clarify uh, that. Arnold wants to be our leader, our Fuhrer. And as American citizens, we have a right to expose him. And that's what we're about to do. From CBS's 60 Minutes to NBC's Meet the Press, Arnold has been all over the airwaves, pushing for amending the Constitution so he can run for president. High-level members of his gubernatorial campaign have now started a national movement to repeal Article 2, Clause 5 of the U.S. Constitution that blocks foreign-born from the presidency. In November of 2004, former President George Herbert Walker Bush gave Schwarzenegger the George Bush Award at his presidential library in College Station, Texas. And he told the crowd, don't bet against Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's a good chance he's going to end up being our president. Arnold Schwarzenegger positioned himself into the Kennedy family by marrying Maria Shriver. And now she's out shilling for him, but saying, it's for other foreigners, not for my husband. Change it for everybody. It's fair. Just trust me. For well over a year, every day they're in the newspapers or on television, pushing to change the Constitution. And now Schwarzenegger, in an authorized biography, has told the Kennedy biographer that yes, there is a secret plan to put him into the White House. And the powerful head of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Orrin Hatch, has introduced what is called the Arnold Bill. There are three other pieces of legislation introduced by other congressmen, like Dana Rohrbacher in the House. They just continue pushing and pushing and pushing, despite the fact that in major polls, 80 plus percent of Americans are against changing the Constitution for Schwarzenegger. But we've got to take the threat seriously. Because after a year of propaganda, the numbers have dropped to 65% being against it. And then you have to ask yourself, what will those numbers be in four years? The elite love Arnold Schwarzenegger because he has an international appeal. And they've been very carefully grooming him for his role as American president inside the New World Order. That's why we've launched Americans Against Arnold and the website ArnoldExposed.com in a desperate attempt to stop this foreign usurper. Efforts by supporters of California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger to change the United States Constitution are not sitting well with a Texas radio host. Alex Jones claims he raised $5,000 in just two hours to combat the campaign for a constitutional amendment to make non-native citizens eligible to serve as president. Jones says he will run TV ads in Austin, Texas and Sacramento, California, opposing the amendment drive. Now let's look at the men who hold the strings connected to the marionette. Here are two different San Francisco Chronicle articles revealing that it was Carl Rove at Bohemian Grove that set the strategy for Arnold's successful gubernatorial win. An article in the Scotsman newspaper in September of 2002 openly showed Arnold Schwarzenegger with Warren Buffett and Lord Rothschild and said they were there meeting at the Rothschild Castle to discuss business strategies. In the article, they talked about how he was lining up his run for U.S. president a year before he ran for governor. In the middle of the Enron-engineered California energy crisis, Arnold met secretly with Michael Milken, the junk bond dealer, and Kenneth Lay at a Beverly Hills hotel. The federal government has now released documents from the event, and guess what they were doing at the meeting? Discussing how to cover up Enron's culpability. Arnold ran for governor promising that he wouldn't take special interest money. Guess what? He's broken all previous records for taking corporate money. 
Like other famous Austrians we can think of, Arnold is obsessed with being king of the world. He's told friends, family, newspapers, magazines, over and over again that he wants to be ruler of the world, that he dreams of being a dictator, that he wants to be worshipped at a Nuremberg-style rally like Hitler. Rolling Stone reported on it in the 70s. The London Guardian and CNN in 2003 both reported how he told friends and family of a recurring dream where he walks the earth as our ruler and of a 50-year plan he had as a young man to become world ruler. In 1990, he told U.S. News and World Report, My relationship to power and authority is that I'm all for it. People need somebody to watch over them. 95% of the people in the world need to be told what to do and how to behave. Here is Schwarzenegger giving the fascist salute in one of his bodybuilding poses. A trick the pro Schwarzenegger press likes to play on the people is to focus on his father and then go, well, he can't help it if his father was an SS officer. What they don't like to focus in on is Nazi war criminal Kirk Waldheim, who was Secretary General of the United Nations. At his wedding to Maria Shriver in 1986, in front of a massive press in attendance, he said the following. My friends don't want me to mention Kurt's name because of all the recent Nazi stuff and the UN controversy. But I love him, and Maria does too, and so thank you, Kurt. Here's a photo of Arnold Schwarzenegger with Kirk Waldheim in Austria in 1999. Kirk Waldheim was an elite Nazi as well, an officer in the SS. He hunted down American soldiers in Serbia and killed them. An article in 92 in Spy Magazine reported on how Arnold liked to give away recordings of Adolf Hitler to friends in California. It also reported on how he loved to give the Siegheil salute. Former Mr. Universe Rick Wayne went public and talked about how Arnold loved to call black people the N-word and said they couldn't run or do anything. And how he went on to say that blacks were basically worthless to society. A second champion black bodybuilder, Robbie Robinson, went public. And in his testimony, he talked about a public event in front of thousands of people where Arnold, in 1978, began screaming, down with the N-words, down with the blacks, subhuman, you people can't run the country. It goes on and on, but the mainstream media ignores it. Arnold's barbaric treatment of women is legendary, and he's publicly apologized for it. The reason this is so important is it shows a total lack of control He's a wild man. More important is his love of domination. He loves to degrade underlings. Arnold has never challenged the 2001 Premier Magazine article where he reportedly makes unattractive members on set get on their knees and call themselves ugly dogs. He reportedly revels in humiliating people until they cry. Not only is he a man after the elite's own heart, loving to dehumanize, He's totally compromised. If we know about all of these skeletons, imagine how many are still in the closet. In a sit-down interview Arnold gave Wee Magazine, he talked about drug use and sex orgies. The elite just loves that, total control over their puppet. Then there's all the publicly available gay porn. That's right, in gay porno mags, Arnold's done some spreads. So let's look at this again. An individual who says he wants to be a dictator, who reportedly hands out recordings of Adolf Hitler's speeches, who openly promotes admitted Nazis like Kurt Waldheim after they're exposed as Nazis and doesn't apologize about it, now wants to be our president. Just like people thinking that you got to so, be born in the United States to yeah. be president. You don't have to be. That's a legend. we got to clarify uh, that. I want everybody to see this live on TV and radio. Just go to Google or startpage.com or any other great search engine and type in Schwarzenegger Hitler quotes. And, and, and I didn't, when I made martial law that has a section on Schwarzenegger in 2005, I didn't just believe the newspapers about this. I actually ordered the... Rolling Stone, where he gave the interview saying, I've, all, I've always dreamed about powerful people like Hitler and being worshipped like Nuremberg, like a dictator. I want to be king of the world, and I'm going to be king of the world. And you're not going to be able to top me. You're not going to be able to top me. Because you're all so stupid and wanting, and I never get over how pathetic people are, how dumb they are. I love to dominate stupid people. Well, I'm not stupid! 
Get out of here, you usurper crook! As the kind of movie star that you are, were, certainly, you could be a dictator. You could say, I want it, and it gets done.